Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another quick pick prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the heavyweight bout between Cyril Gain versus Junior DeSantis or Junior DeSantis versus Cyril Gain. I think that's how it is. By the way, I'm going to see whatever way it is, who's ever in the red corner and might switch around. By the way, you know who it is. It's Cyril Gain versus Junior DeSantis or Junior DeSantis versus Cyril Gain. Matter of fact, it's Junior DeSantis versus Cyril Gain is, you know, yeah. But yes, those Santos versus Cyril Gain. So look at this one right here. Um, Two high level strikers. I think. I don't think those Santos is as shot as people think he, think he is. But it's more so people know his patterns. And people, like, he's made improvements in other areas, but his patterns are still there. And people know his patterns. And this is heavyweight. So you got a pattern, and people got the power, you know, the skill and power to walk you into these patterns and land that heavyweight power on you. They can put you out. So it is what it is. I feel like Junior Santos has made some defense, I mean, some improvements to his footwork. Still have an issue with when he gets back to the cage and circling off, which is the main issue for him. But his takedown defense, as we saw against Curtis Blade, has went up tremendously. Curtis Blade could not get a takedown on him. But still, he got caught loading up on the uppercut in court. But that was a whole different issue. But either way, there's some predictability issues and some pattern issues that people all know. Still a solid fighter. Definitely chin has weathered. Ability to take damage has wet, like d decreased. But it's more so for the fact that the man is too predictable, has his patterns, and people that at a certain level can do it. Like, other fighters can try to do that. He still could beat a lot of fighters, probably pretty much like 80% of the heavyweight roster, but when that, you know, that upper echelon, well, really like 90%, it's like that 10%, maybe probably even like 95%, because like, only more like top five people or people that's going to be in that top five or top six, top seven that can really be him, but either way, when you're in, at that level, it's like every loss is a big factor and everything reflects, but either way, going against Rogaine, Rogaine, Rogaine is a high-level striker, and like I said, it, just when you got a pattern and at that high level of striking, the guy that has a pattern is going to lose. So Dos Santos is, I mean, like they're both big, they both hit hard, they both technical, both pack a lot of power. But Dos Santos has a pattern, and I feel like Cyril Gain is just going to walk him into his pattern. Be using a lot of front kicks to get um, Dos Santos back against that cage, and circle him into that right hand or circle him to the right, and then load up and catch him and crack him. This is um, Jarzino did, but in a little bit cleaner. Jarzino was getting outstruck and outboxed by Dos Santos for a large portion of that fight. And then he just like, let me see, let me just pressure him and get him against that cage and circle him to my power. And then the whole fight changes, and then the whole fight was over. But I feel like the game would be a little bit more in control of the fight from the start. It's going to be more competitive, a chess match early. But all things known that, always known that the game's whole attention is just to fill him out and get him in that pattern and then circle him into his power and knock him out. And I think that happens early on in that third round. So in this fight, I have surreal gain via third round TKO.